Um, we're hearing a lot that we do throat couches and we worry about throat infections. Yeah. Why do pediatricians focus so much on sore throats? Is there a reason for that? Well, many years ago, uh, really before the antibiotic era, we used to see a much more rheumatic fever. The rheumatic fever is an inflammation of the heart, and it's related to strep throat. So what all the what the doctors are doing is um, is culturing the patient to see if they have a, a strep throat. When a person gets strep throat, the body makes chemicals to fight strep throat. These chemicals, in some people, and not all people, we, and we don't really know which people, but in some people, these same chemicals can eventually affect the heart. But now that's not always so easy to diagnose, but they will have some other signs and symptoms. Um, there are major and minor criteria for this that we use. So some of the criteria that we use is arthritis, which would be swollen, red, hot joints, and it's a migratory arthritis. One, it'll go to one joint, and then that joint will actually begin to get better, and it'll go to another large joint. Um, a rash, and it's not just one of your simple uh, allergic rashes, it's called a serpentine, lines, uh, usually on extensive surfaces of the body. Um, they may end up getting chorea. Chorea is where you have uncontrollable movements, uh, and it actually may start out as a change in personality. I, I, I've had parents tell me that, oh, I think my child is crazy, and that's like the beginning until when they come in, the child can hardly walk, and can hardly, can hardly control himself. Carditis is a fourth one that, that we've mentioned uh, as a major criteria. The fifth one is called a nodule, subcutaneous nodules, which, which I've rarely seen. It's really seen more patients who get rheumatic fever over and over again. And to make the diagnosis, you really should have two major criteria, or one minor, or two, one major and two minor. Some of the minor criteria include some of the acute phase reactants, blood tests like a, a, a erythro, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, or, or C well, reactive well, protein. Uh, uh, sedimentation rate. What is that? This is a blood test. It's a blood test, and, and what the blood test is telling you is a test telling you that something is wrong. It doesn't tell you that what exactly it is. It just says there is something going on. So such tests, you know, only give us an idea to that we should look further. Okay? I, I, I heard the doctors check antibody against strep. And we check, well, we, we are one, one of the criteria I suppose I should have mentioned first, you must have some proof that, you, that the patient had strep. Now that might just be a simple, you know, history of a positive strep, uh, strep culture. Or um, sometimes it can, it can occur a few months later, okay? You, you won't be able to really connect the two, so we do a blood test, and we can find some of the antibodies to strep or to DNA or to other you know, portions of the strep bacteria. If it affects the heart, it, what does it do? It Does it do something to valves? Well, you know, when um, you have a simple cut, a you know, person gets a simple cut, what happens is the area begins to turn red. And what's going on there? Well, what's going on there is inflammation. That's the body's way of beginning to repair the area. Okay, and then eventually what will happen, eventually the um, area will be repaired totally and you'll end up with a scar. Now, when you have something, we have, you know, something like rheumatic fever, the body has these antibodies come and attack the heart, for example. And then, and the body brings in all these other cells, this inflama inflammatory process occurs. And it starts going and breaking down the area, getting ready to repair the area. And then it repairs it with a scar. Okay, so it, when, even when it's totally repaired, it's not, it isn't normal anymore. Okay? So the, the door gets swollen, gets scarred, so it now becomes a narrow exit? So, well, no, well most commonly, most commonly, the air, now, I, what I, I, should also, I should tell you first that I mentioned the major criteria, I mentioned other systems, the, the um, joints and the skin, the rash and the brain. Those, those heal and, and don't have a problem. But the heart, unfortunately, when it does get affected, the heart can then have permanent damage, can have permanent scarring. It most commonly affects the mitral valve, and then the most common would then be the mitral valve and the aortic valve. These are two valves, again, that open up and close, and, you know, in, in terms of controlling blood from going forward and backward. And what, you, what we really see much more is are these valves leaking initially. They, they initially leak. Um, if you get rheumatic fever over and over again and with this healing process and the scarring tissue, you eventually can have these valves not open well and you get stenosis of the valves. What can they do for that? 
Well, for, well, when, when we do have mitral stenosis or, or aortic stenosis, you know, we can do a uh, balloon procedure again, you know, with, with, you know, using catheters. Um, but, you know, even when sometimes the patients just have bad leaky valves, okay, and that's really what I think we, we really in pediatrics see much more of a leaky valve, but and, and that has to be surgically taken care of. Okay, but sometimes they can replace valves too? Sometimes, you know, well, well the surgeon will, will certainly try not to. Um, they often, especially for the leaky valves, uh, they're able to put in a ring to tighten the valve up so that the valve um, is tighter and doesn't leak as much or leaks very little, so that's not significant. But then, you know, when you get a valve that, that, that both leaks and doesn't, doesn't open well, that's something you have to go on and, and actually re replace the whole valve.